So what is DNA, this molecule that carries genetic information and heredity from generation to generation? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. That has to do with the structure of it, which we'll learn later. It is the heredity molecule that determines protein shape, which is very, very crucial through uh, molecular biology. So although DNA was found to be the carrier of genetic material through the experiments in the previous lecture, scientists still did not know what the structure of it was. So the first picture of DNA was taken by Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins. They used X-ray crystallography to help determine the shape of the DNA molecule. Watson and Crick, using data that they stole from Rosalind Franklin, developed the model for what is now DNA. They turned it the double helix. The double helix is like a twisted ladder. It is made up of nucleotides. Along the outsides are sugar and phosphate groups. They run in opposite directions on either side. The rungs are made up of nitrogen bases that have very specific base pairs. This picture shows the sugar phosphate backbone running in different directions. They label the backbone by the number of carbons. So the five carbon is where the phosphate group comes off, and the third carbon is where a hydroxyl group comes off. They say it runs five to three one way, and three to five the other way. So now we're going to look at the basic building block of DNA. This is called a nucleotide. DNA is a polymer made up of repeating monomers called nucleotides. Nucleotide is made up of a sugar and an acid and a base. The sugar is deoxyribose. The acid is phosphoritic acid. And the bases, there's four types in DNA. They're made out of nitrogen. They come in two varieties, ones with single rings and ones with double. Here's a diagram of nucleotide. Notice how everything's connected to the sugar in the middle. The sugar is deoxyribose. Also connected to it is a nitrogen base. This one is adenosine and has two rings. And then also your phosphoritic acid. If you take away the phosphoritic acid, you don't have a nucleotide. You have what's called a nucleoside. Nucleotides come in two varieties. Purines, which have double rings, and pyrimidines, which only have a single ring. The four bases that are present in DNA are adenine and guanine, which are your purines with two rings, and thiamine and cytosine, which are your pyrimidines with only one. Here's a closer look at the purines and pyrimidines. Notice your purines, adenine, and guanine, and how the structure has two rings in it. And then over at the pyrimidines, thiamine, and cytosine, there's only one ring. There's also uracil here, which is a pyrimidine that is used in RNA, and we'll talk about that more later. Base pairs pair up in very specific ways. This will be very important when we talk about replication and transcription. Purines only match with a specific pyrimidine. So adenine only matches with thionine with a double hydrogen bond. Guanine only matches with cytosine with a triple hydrogen bond. And the heredity information is stored in the sequence of bases. Notice how the hydrogen bonds will line up when you look at guanine and cytosine. Guanine only pairs with cytosine, and cytosine only pairs with guanine. This is the only way that they'll fit and have them fit correctly on the rungs of DNA. Here is the base pairing between adenine and thionine. This is the only way that the hydrogen bonds will match up. And remember, adenine only pairs with thiamine, and thiamine only pairs with adenine. Purines cannot pair with purines because the rung would be too long, and pyrimidines can't pair with pyrimidines because the base would be too short. Adenine can't pair up with cytosine because the hydrogen bonds don't match up, and guanine can't pair with thiamine because also the hydrogen bonds won't show up. 